They swear to the interpreters. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that you will well and truly interpret the proceedings in front of this court to the best of your ability, so help you God? I do. Do you swear or affirm that you will interpret all of the proceedings before this court to the best of your ability, so help you God? Please swear the witness. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, under fear of penalty of perjury? I do. State your name and address for the record. My name is Kip Manville. I live in Warrington, somewhere around in the Darrow County. And what is your occupation? I work as a farrier. And describe what that means. What does a farrier do? Farrier is the person who shoes horses. Do you know Sarah Baker? Yes, I do. Yes, I know her because of my work at Ashgate, and I know that she's had some behaviors with some people in the community, and that's why I got fired. Uh, objection. Foundation? Sustained. Next question. Did you enjoy your tenure at Ashgate Farm?
Your Honor, the interpreter uh, need to clarify with the witness a particular sign that was used just to make sure that the interpreter team understands, but that's all right with Your Honor. It's just limited to one sign? Yes. Yes. Yes, I worked there for two years and in as much in as a job as a farrier. Both Chris and Kelly both said that I did a very good job working with the polo ponies. And have you ever seen Ms. Baker become violent? Your Honor, the interpreters would like clarification on the word violent, if there can be some description around what type of violence that the attorney is referring to. Have you ever seen Ms. Baker lose her temper or shout or become have any kind of physical alteration with anyone there at Ashgate? Yes, I did, and after that, she treated me differently. And what was that incident? I remember an incident where there was a man by the name of Will White. He approached me. His face was red and flushed. He was talking to me. I didn't understand what he was saying. I gestured to him where Sarah's house was. He went to the house. They went in. They came out. Sarah was yelling and gesturing. She went back in, got a gun came back out, fired the gun once, and then she pointed the gun in my face. And then what happened?
Sarah talked to me and said that she wanted, she was just interested in protecting the property and that Will wanted to take the Ashgate farm away from her and that all of us that work there were like family and we needed to work together and that if the poli police came I should talk to Chris to so that the police can talk to Chris but the police arrived soon after and I didn't have a chance to talk to Chris and so I explained to the police officer that Will White was the one that wanted to take the property. Did anything else happen? Your Honor, the interpreters need clarification on the timeline of did anything else happen that particular time incident or another bit? Trying to figure out what the attorney is referring to. Yes, yes, we can get that clarification. That with that particular incident. Sarah and I didn't talk again about the incident, but an attorney came and talked to me and said for me not to worry, that everything was going to be okay, and I shouldn't worry about anything, but that I know that the police officer gave Sarah a citation for firing the, the pistol. Did you continue to work there after that? Shortly after that, Chris called me into his office and accused me of drinking on the job. I don't drink on the job. What I do at work is work, and when I go out at night and drink, that's what I do at night. There have been, there were a couple of times when Kelly would give me something to drink at work, but I keep work and my drinking separate. Were you friends with Mr. Baker? Yes, I would consider us friends, but I felt bad for Kelly because Sarah didn't look at him like she had looked at him in the past. What kind of things would the two of you discuss over drinks?
we would talk about things that were going on at Ashgate, just the operations, make sure everything was going smoothly. And there, we also talked about there was this one guy, I think he was a cop, he'd show up, and the way that Sarah looked at him was very different than the way she looked at Kelly. When was the first time you saw the two of them together? The interpreters need to ask a clarifying question about a particular event that the witness just described in terms of when that event happened in relation to the rest of the testimony. Yes, fine. Five months ago, there was an event at Ashgate, and the family has like a family box where they sit. And I saw Sarah and this big police officer guy sitting there, and she was touching him in ways that I have not seen her touch Kelly. And then afterwards, we went to the Saddle restaurant, and I saw her with this, this guy. Objection, Your Honor. Personal knowledge? Sustained. When was the next time you saw them together? May the interpreters have a moment to confer? Yes. Uh, the interpreters need to correct the previous interpretation that the witness said that he saw Miss Baker and the large gentleman, the cop gentleman, not in the family box at the event, but at the restaurant, at the salad restaurant. All right. I believe the record's been corrected.
and the interpreters would ask that the last question be repeated. When was the next time you saw them together? Your Honor, the interpreter would like a moment to confirm. <laughs> Your Honor, the uh, can you explain to the court what is the issue? There, Your Honor, the testimony that the witness gave to the two questions ago about what had happened, when did he see Miss Baker and the gentleman after the uh, large event at Ashgate Farms? The interpretation was inaccurate. So yes, the, I think we already corrected the yes, record. But the witness answer to that question was not was given to the interpreters, but not given to the court. So when the clarification of the previous incorrect answer, now we're, we're a little bit behind. So the interpreters have information from the witness around that particular answer that has not been given to the court yet and not put on the record yet. So my suggestion then is that, uh, is that we go back to that question Okay. And try to reframe this and see if we can get this resolved. So my question is, again, when was the next time you saw Sarah and the cop together after seeing them at the Saddle restaurant? I saw the cop gentleman come to the house several times, a couple of weeks after that, and he would go into the house and be with Sarah. There was also another time when Sarah told Chris that she was thinking about taking Kelly's name off the will. Uh, objection, Your Honor. Hearsay and relevance. Your Honor, we're not offering for the truth, but to show that it was said. The very act of making the statement had an effect on the witness, and the witness's substitute subsequent course of conduct. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll allow it. Uh, Mr. Manville, please continue. Do you remember the question?
I know that Sarah went to Chris's house and talked to him about taking, talked to Chris about taking Kelly's name off the will. And she told Chris that didn't have to worry about Kelly taking the house away because she was going to make sure everything was protected. And what did you do next? After the discussion that I saw with Sarah and Chris, then the next day I talked to Kelly on my video phone and told him what I had seen. He told me not to worry that he was going to take care of me and that he was going to go to an attorney and he did not want a divorce and he wanted to get half the house and half of the wealth of the family. Did you continue to work there after that? Shortly after that, Chris called me into his office and gave me a check that was worth three months severance pay and told me that I was terminated. And when I asked him why, he said that it was because I was drinking on the job. But that's a lie. I think this is a big cover-up. No further questions. Are we ready for cross-examination? Yes, sure. Was Mr. Baker upset when you told him about your suspicions that between the cop and his wife? He seemed upset. He looked sad when I told him. When you told him, was he drinking? Uh, 
Yes, he was. So now, when Mr. McCormick was in the house with Miss Baker, you were never actually inside with them, correct? No, I was not, but I can imagine what was going on inside the house. But you have no personal knowledge of what they were actually doing. I didn't see anything, but I know what happened. So, let's be clear. You never personally saw them engaging in romantic conduct inside the house, correct? Isn't it true that when you saw the cop enter Ashgate with Miss Baker, they were carrying papers? Your Honor, the interpreters would like to reinterpret the, the previous question about the romantic involvement between um, what the witness saw from Miss Baker and Mr. McCormick, because the interpretation did not include the romantic intention of the question. It was just about whether the witness had seen them together. Well, Mr. Defense, would you like to repeat that, please? Absolutely. The question was, you never personally saw them engaging in any romantic conduct inside the house. Correct? No, I did not see anything that went on in the house. I can imagine what was going on in there. Okay. I also would like to ask, well, re-ask the question, because I don't believe I got an answer to, isn't it true that when you saw the cop enter Ashgate with Miss Baker, they were carrying papers? I don't remember seeing them carry anything. Okay. Now, it was you who called Mr. Baker and told him about seeing his wife at the Saddle restaurant with the cop. Isn't that true?
Yes, I did, because I felt like Kelly needed to know. Do you know whether Ms. Baker had already told Mr. Baker about inviting the officer to the annual charity event? I think that she did tell him. Isn't it also true that the first part of this year you were sentenced to 90 days in jail for a new DUI violation of probation? Yes. Is it true that Miss Baker agreed with the probation department to set up a f work furlough arrangement so that you could work during the 90 days and do the jail time in the evenings? Mr. Manville, you've had three DUI convictions, have you not? Yes, I know I have a problem, but I keep my work and my drinking separately. I do them at separate times. Didn't you work, used to work at Barrett Farms? Yes. And weren't you fired from that job? Yes. Can you tell me what happened?
the Barrett family had gone on vacation, and they were gone a couple of several weeks. And during that time, I saw one of the horses in the field, and I kind of felt sorry for the horse since I got a request to rent the horse. I rented the horse for $500. Of the $500, $300 I left in the family office, and I kept $200 of it. When the family returned, they found out the whole thing, and that's when they fired me. In fact, wasn't the owner so upset that he reported it to the sheriff? Yes, and I ended up paying a fine. So you pled guilty to that charge? Yes, I did. No further questions, Your Honor.